Captain's Log, star date 2623.3. Urgent cryptic orders have mysteriously diverted the Enterprise to Space Station K7 and the disputed area with the Klingon Empire. Jim, what's going on? Bones, you know as much as we do. I can tell you this much. We're not the only starship that's involved. We've monitored coded orders to 29 starships and 12 Starfleet installations. This sector's become extremely unstable since the disappearance of the Organians. The Klingons have become increasingly active after realizing enforcement of the treaty is now problematic. Gentlemen, let's get some answers. Well, I don't like it. This cloak and dagger stuff always manages to fill my sick bay. Let's get some answers, gentlemen. Mr. Scott, energize. Admiral Sheen, welcome aboard. Jim, what do you see? I see you. You know my officers, Dr. McCoy, Mr. Spock, Commander Scott. Scotty, this is Commodore Probert, Captain Martin. What's this all about, sir? Well, the Klingons are about to destroy every vestige of peace we have with them. Well, there haven't been any reports of raiding or pirating in the system for quite some time. Well, they've been pulling back, gathering an attack force. Klingon battle groups are massing around every planet and station on the border. War games are not uncommon training tactics. No, 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 no. This is much bigger than any we've ever seen. Now, a massive attack on the Federation is imminent. Admiral, I have great respect for Starfleet intelligence, but trying to interpret Klingon mentality... Captain, it's confirmed. Epsilon 9 has intercepted and authenticated a battle plan that'll turn your blood cold. Our orders, sir. To proceed directly to the Klingon homeworld. And once there, convince the Emperor to give up this plan of war. To Kronos? With one starship? You're talking suicide. We'll be facing the entire Klingon fleet before we get a parsec in their space. Oh, you'll have an advantage. Mr. Scott, beam over our guest. What guest? Your best shot at arriving on Kronos safely. He'll give you all the details you need in order to secure a safe mission. Remember when the Organians said that we would end up working together despite our many differences? Well, the two of you are going to have to do just that. You have to stop this war before it begins. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Log Supplement. With war looming, the Enterprise has been ordered deep into Klingon territory. To the Klingon homeworld. Our mission to convince their Emperor to stand down. Our guide, a Klingon warrior who shows no signs of having been affected by the augment virus. None of you Earthers ever seen a Klingon? Only those genetically engineered. Improved. With human DNA. Shaw! This is Captain James T. Kirk. He's the commander of this ship. Captain? This is Kashaw. He escaped the Empire in a freighter, Jim. We picked him up on Sherman's planet. No Klingon would ever defect, and I sure as hell wouldn't trust him if he did. I'm not defected! Nor am I working with you. We merely have a mutual goal. If we can reach the Katumba, this war can be averted, Captain. What's a Katumba? 
Not a what, Doctor? A whom? The Katumba is their emperor. He's a sacred ruler who rules as a god. He carries the blood of Kalis. All of the planets, peoples, and battle fleets of the Empire are his personal property. Civilized people do not own other people. The history of your Earth says otherwise. You're a loyal slave. And yet you come here ready to sell out your emperor. Why? The Katumba is a 16-year-old boy. Since birth, he's been sheltered. He's never left Kronos. He's scarcely more than a figurehead. The real power lies with his regents, Warlord Malkathon, and his deputy, Kali. As regent, Malkathon ended the boy's education to get rid of Kasha. The more I hear of this, the less I like it. A Klingon that would betray his own people because he's afraid of war? I just don't buy this. I do not fear war, Captain. I relish it. Really? Then why don't you tell me what a Klingon warrior is really afraid of? A dishonorable death. This is not war, Captain. This is certain death with no purpose. As formidable as the forces at Mount Thun has gathered, the Federations are no less so. I know the power of your starships. I fought them myself in my younger days. Only mutual annihilation can come from open war between us. If the Katumba comes of age in the midst of such a war, Klingon pride will demand that he continue it. Bones? Take Mr. Kishah down to sickbay for an examination. You question my honor, Captain? So be it. Subject me to all your truth devices. You will find I do not lie. The Empire prepares a massive strike from many directions with all our forces. Look, we're going to a war zone. Would you rather I figure out your biology while I'm tending to your injuries? A warrior would not need the interference of an Earth doctor. A tutor or peace emissary might. Jack, you realize you're risking my ship and the lives of my crew on the chance that this Klingon is trustworthy. Kishaw can help you avoid patrols and open battles. Or he could lead us into both. Capturing the Enterprise would allow the Klingons to dissect its technology. And destroy the balance of power. Which is precisely why the Klingons should never, ever get the Enterprise. Are we clear, Captain? Perfectly. We're expendable. Battle groups in Sector 12, 14, and 19 are in place and prepared. All colonies on the border are manned and ready for battle, Lord Malkvon. Good. Now we position our fleets to fill the void between. Our ships will be so numerous they'll blot out the very stars. Captain Nittok informs us of a glorious victory, Lord. A fleet of merchant vessels destroyed on the way to Sherman's planet. Personal ambition. Kill him. He's just a boy, Malkthon, with no powers, no contacts, and knows nothing. Yet we waste a hundred ships guarding his sacred presence. There is no place in my plan for a weak, pampered boy. Report. En route to the Klingon border, sir. Steady as she goes. The bridge is yours. We've never ventured this far into the disputed area without encountering Klingon ships. Well, with Kishaw's help, hopefully we won't encounter any more. You all know our mission. And if we're to have any chance of success, it's going to depend on this crew's ability to work with our guests. You know, i got to hand it to him, Jim. Kishaw doesn't trust us any more than we trust him, but I'll be damned if he didn't sit still for every test I could think of. I'm finding Kishaw to be more reasonable than any Klingon we've encountered, and much less governed by emotion than humans. Quite unexpected. And refreshing. Well, Spock, if you prefer Klingons, I'm sure we can arrange to leave you behind. Forward scanner to bridge. Green. Environmental. We've adjusted Kishaw's quarters to meet his specifications, and I got Botany digging up all the live worms they can spare. Forward thrusters at station. 
Captain Kirk, I have information which will ensure we reach Kronos in safety. We have charts mapped during a mission of Enterprise in X01. President Archer's mission was over 100 years ago. I offer updated charts and vital information on military posts and patrol schedules. That's rather odd information for a teacher to have. Not for the teacher of the Katumba. Ms. Anadohora, send this down to astronautics. Aye, sir. Captain, sensors have registered a man-made object for an instant. Again, for 2.3 seconds. Location. 253 Mark IV. Unable to determine range. Lieutenant, put it on the main viewer. Extreme mag. Captain, it is a ghost ship and must be destroyed. We've heard rumors of fast one-man ships with cloaking devices. I will not reveal the defenses of the Empire, not even to complete this mission. You might have mentioned that before we sailed into Klingon space. Ghost ships are unarmed, Captain. All power is reserved for the cloaking device. Then it's not much of a threat. Untrue, Captain. We are in disputed space, headed directly for the Empire's border. If he gains the power to transmit our position, he will notify the fleet of our intentions. You cannot find him, Captain. Allow me to assist. Jim, is this our mission? To destroy every ship we meet? We'll be no better than the Klingons. We'd be replacing warfare with terrorism. Another contact, sir. Two seconds. Captain, our mission ends here if he transmits our position. Jim, you're hunting an unarmed ship. It's subspace radio is its weapon, Doctor. Assist, Mr. Spock. Plotting its course. Feeding to navigation. Follow that ship. Lay in a course. Warp factor six. I see. I have it. Approximately 200,000 kilometers. Mr. Chekhov, I need photon torpedoes. Timed fuses, 25,000 kilometers. Torpedoes loaded, Captain. Tactical on viewer. Yes, taking evasive action. Correcting course. Range, 100,000. Closing fast. We're going to overshoot him. Slow to impulse. He's turned again. He's got to know he can't escape. Ship to ship. Broadcast an appeal to surrender. Surrender, Captain? No Klingon would dishonor himself so. Once he decloaks, he will gain the power to transmit our position. No response, sir. 50,000. He will signal it is his duty. 30,000. Photon torpedoes, broadest possible spread. At this range, the blast will impact us as well. Jim, this is murder. Any way you cut it. Fire. I'll take damage control reports. Resume course. Where is it? He died with honor. His name will be remembered by his house. I've never met a Klingon I'd consider honorable. You have not met all Klingons, Doctor. Many of our great houses use the concept of honor as their guide. Doesn't matter what fancy excuse you give it. You didn't even flinch at that man's death. A small price to pay for peace, Doctor. It wasn't small to him. Class M planet, slightly larger than Earth. From Kronos, our sacred planet, we have carried the glory of the Klingon Empire to star systems beyond measure. By carried, you mean enslaved? Protected, Captain. Each system we bring into the Empire further guarantees the existence of all. We managed to do that with mutual trade agreements. Clumsy and inefficient. I'm sure your subjects would prefer a little inefficiency to Klingon rule. They have easy lives. For the few laws imposed, they enjoy the benefits of belonging to the Empire. We experienced those laws and benefits firsthand on Organia. Then you know, Captain, it is our warriors who lead difficult lives. For the honor of their duty, they serve aboard ships without any of the luxuries you enjoy aboard the Enterprise. Spacious cabins, soft beds, recreation areas. We reserve our spaces for combat training areas. Society cannot thrive if all it does is prepare for combat. We pass on values and history to our children without the aid of swimming pools and bowling alleys on our warships, Doctor. Oh, well, I'm surprised you make time for children. Those retired raise our young to the age of warrior training. Mothers don't raise their own children? A practice not uncommon on Earth, in cultures where women were thought unfit to teach their sons to die. 
Sparta, feudal Japan. Captain, uh, Keisha's star charts aren't adequate. They're vague. From an astronomy textbook, I guess, not a navigational program. Can you make it work? Well, I've overlapped the two maps into the database and I've programmed the computer to look for uncharted anomalies. But still, the sensors are going to have to work overtime to make sure we don't fly into anything. Captain to the bridge. Kirk here. I click on battle group. Dead ahead. Five ships, Captain. Older models, but their weapons are fully armed. Even the Enterprise isn't a match for five birds of prey. Battle stations, Captain. Slow to one points. Bird of Prey sensors. Range. We're on Klingon territory. What's it gonna be? War and dishonor? One of your damned military secrets. This is where you make up your mind about this mission. Should you be unwilling to provide the range of these ship's sensors, it would be unwise to continue further into Klingon territory. Jim, if you ever wanted a definition of suicide, this is it! Six parsecs maximum. Unreliable beyond five. On current course, they will pass without coming into sensor range. Stop all engines. Shut down all non-essential systems. You admit defeat already? With our power down, we'll be less likely to be spotted. Drifting. 6.2 parsecs. Drifting within sensor range. Klingon battle group proceeding on course. They're moving away. When they reach 8 parsecs distance, resume normal ship operation. We wait in silence until they pass? Only fools don't attack! Our course to Kronos, warp 7. But without honor! Are we gonna spend the entire trip hiding in the bushes while this Klingon stands there and lectures us about honor? Honor, Mr. Scott, is behavior that adheres to a clear sense of what is morally right. The specifics of any given action must meet no further qualification to be, in fact, honorable. Do the ends justify the means? A hiding may not be the better part of valor, Doc, but in this case... It means we kill fewer people. We shall not be hiding, we shall be cleverly avoiding patrols on their known stations. And how do we avoid the hundred-odd ships guarding your home planet? We cannot. It shall be a challenge to survive the patrol's lines, but sanctuary will be granted once we reach the sacred planet. And this law has been upheld before? No ship has ever made it. to finalize the war plans. I'll leave the child rearing to you. It is easy now that the tutor is gone. Katama's father was not so simple. Cunning, in fact. It took great strategy and effort. One wonders whether the Katamba is, in truth, his father's son. As long as the people believe the blood of Kalas runs through his veins... They follow him blindly. Oh well. The Katumba serves our purposes. For now. Fair 
verified. All weapon subsystems are operating at peak efficiency. We've even managed to exceed the standard complement of photon torpedoes. Even if we use every weapon we have, it isn't going to get us through 100 Klingon ships. The alternative? I'm almost through with the initial programming. An old submarine trick in the depths of space. There. I see it. There's a glitch. An error in the reverse algorithm? Further back in the programming. You have to trace it back further. This sequence is incomplete. I see it. This maneuver isn't in the Starfleet tactical database. You know every military tactic in the database? Sometimes you have to be creative. Oh, you missed a step. It's a small gap. The logic subroutine will bridge those steps. The first rule of security work is never assume anything. The smallest detail could mean life or death. I can assume Russian is your native language because you speak with an accent. Or that I know women find accents irresistible. If we don't solve the sequencing problem, then we activate this device. The Enterprise will implode in a great fiery ball. Approaching the Klingon home system. Ten parsecs. Captain, there is a Klingon patrol on sensors. Range 8.2 parsecs. On screen. Battle stations, go to red alert. Battle stations, all hands to battle stations. The home system guard. You can't circumvent them. Confirm. They completely surround the system. Rome's walls are her soldiers. You and the strongest walls can follow the right battering ram. Jim, tell me there's a plan B. We have a sensor contact commander. A Federation starship. And Lord Malthorn thinks us redundant. Identify. Enterprise. Our ships are targeting us. Your plan, Captain? Speed. And some good old-fashioned human ingenuity. Centel, Stax. Ready when you are, sir. Stand by. 242, Mark 8, Warp Factor 6. Aye, right, sir. We can't outrun all of them. How is this any better than Plan A? The Guard will expect us to make a suicide run in hopes of reaching Kronos. Which is exactly why we're heading for Altar, where the fleet is based. The Altar system is 3.9 light years distant. Course laid in. Well, we're, we're going where there are more ships? Sir... There's no way that Then my eyes deceive me! Ah! No Federation captain could have come this far. Klingons closing up maximum. Shields up. Arm phaser, sir? No. Divert more power to the shields. We're at warp 9. There's no more power to be had. Sign, back off. Let them get within firing range. Firing range. Five seconds. Shields at maximum. I cannot hold them there forever. Emergency speed. Ram the ship down their throats. Out of range. They're coming about. Prepare to alter course for Kronos on my mark. Hey, sir. Closing. Ten seconds to range. Ready when you are, sir. Weapons, now. You're too close and too many. Aim with care or we... of our glorious victory. Tell him the Earthers are dead. We're inside the home system patrol. What just happened? They destroyed a decoy bones. It distracted them enough to allow us to change our course. In ancient submariner maneuver, the decoy emits a signal that appears to be the ship of origin, a signal so overpowering that it jams sensor contact to the actual ship. Good work, Mr. Chekhov. I owe your team a raise. Thank you, sir. Well, you could have told me. It was Plan B. Captain, we're picking up Klingon transmissions. On speakers, Lieutenant.
They're informing Mount Thon of our course to Ultar. Maintain present course. Aye, sir. Last known course was to fleet headquarters, Lord Mount Thon. All scans show negative. There's no Federation ship heading here. We confirm their course. You fool! Standard orbit. Open the channel, Lieutenant. Aye, sir. On viewer. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise, representing the United Federation of Planets. In accordance with your laws and customs, we demand sanctuary. I am Kali, regent to the Katampa. I will consider it. We read another ship en route from Ultar. I presume it is the real regent, and that he's coming to tell you what to do. Sanctuary is granted. Thank you. Then may I request an audience with the Katumba, so that I may assure him of our peaceful intentions. You presume too much, Earther. I presume that it is the region's duty to teach the Katumba how to rule wisely. Malkthon will fail that duty if he denies the Katumba an audience with his greatest enemy. <laughs> My, what an exaggerated sense of importance you possess, Kirk. Malkthon will present your request. You will be told of the sacred leader's decision. Thank you for your most gracious consideration. Great. If the kid says no, we'll be trapped here until our supplies run out. We don't have that option, Bones. I feel a little better if our security chief was carrying real weapons. The law bans modern weapons from Kronos. You know, if you paid attention to the briefing, you would know that. Oh, but we can carry a knife, a sword, a batlet, a mevac, a tajtik, a kunluk, a chitsit, a mitsu. You know, sometimes you scare me, woman. <laughs> Captain, a ceremonial sword will make a better impression. Didn't we used to cut cake with this at the Academy? Captain, I implore you again to reconsider your actions. Wait for the Katumba's invitation. Keisha, this boy is isolated. He probably has no idea that this ship is even in orbit. Malkthon has no reason to tell him anything. Our meeting with him has no benefit and carries a great deal of risk. Come with us. Present us to the Katumba. I cannot. I must respect the law which now bars me from the sacred planet. It is a matter of honor. Captain, the Katumba's weekly audience is the only time he's seen in public. It's our only chance to speak with him without the region's influence. The Katumba is quick-witted and honorable, but he is a boy. When he sees the face of his enemy, his curiosity will force a meeting. Take this with you. Announce to the Katumba that you bear a gift. The dagger of a Klingon killed honorably in battle. It'll be a message to a warrior already present. Then there are others working with you. I do not know his face or his name. However, he will reveal himself to you once he sees that dagger. No. We came here as peace emissaries, not as spies. Captain, this warrior serves the Katumba, and you will find him to be your ally. The success of this mission depends upon your ability to work with him. Would you like a cloak to go with that dagger? Mr. Spock, you're in command. If we fail to return from this mission, the orders from Starfleet Command fall to you. The Enterprise must not be captured or fall into enemy hands. I understand, sir. Energize.
human approach. Who are you that you dare to come before me in the uniform of my enemy? I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. My ship has earned the right of sanctuary. On behalf of the United Federation of Planets, I've come to pay respect to the sacred leader of the Klingon people. It is my hope that we can work together to avoid a conflict devastating to both of us. Kirk, you are the Federation's most annoying insect. This great captain, this man of legend, begs for mercy before we even attack. <laughs> he achieved the impossible with the help of a traitor. He is not worthy of the Katumba's time. I bring a gift. A dagger taken from a Klingon warrior who fell in battle. I ask that I may return it in order to honor him who served the Katumba so bravely. I will secure this gift, Katumba. Your rash actions have endangered all that we have built, Kirk. Each time I meet you, I'm more shocked that human civilization has managed to survive this long. What's going on? What are you doing here, Kirk? There is no time for that now. I've got you out safely. Go, Kirk. If you are the one chosen by Kishar, then we must speak with the Katumba alone. I can arrange it, but not now. If I do not prove to Malkthorn that you're death Kronos, he will hunt you. And honor is not a word he understands. Await my signal, Kirk. Kirk to Enterprise. Beam us up now. Fourth and Ninth fleets have mobilized. They arrive on station in two days. Time draws near. With the Katumba seal, the invasion begins. All ships, sensor arrays, and communication relays are on alert, Lord. Kirk remains on his ship. I would gladly collect his dead, rotting carcass if he would simply stay there and die. I trust he won't. Double the gods on the Katumba. When Kirk returns, he dies. Slowly. Are these disguises going to work? But the rest like the majority of the population, Nancy. Servos and subjects. And many of them look human. I wasn't looking forward to facial reconstruction. Mr. Prescott, you have the captain's orders. If anything happens to this ship, you're fired. As I should be, Lieutenant. <laughs> Transport will be initiated from the planet. Cogs jury rig a set of relays to send your signal through at least four different Klingon ships. So our transport to the planet isn't detected. I don't like it. If it ever got lost, there's no way I could find you. Jim, you realize you're putting your lives in the hands of a man who's tried to blow us up before. Peace starts with the courage to trust Dr. McCoy. And a good sword. So where's yours? Prepare to beam down. The signal should be coming through soon. Getting a little too old for space travel, Kirk? Do not push me, Kirk. 
I have no stomach for working with the enemy. Neither do I, but we don't have any choice. I am free to leave her at any time. You, Kirk, got trapped. Really? Then why are you still here? There are some things in this universe more important than my personal ambitions. Never thought I'd hear a Klingon say that. He's lying. You know nothing of Klingons. Kishar did well to bring you here. Though I did not expect it to be the Enterprise. We both know that the Enterprise is the only ship that could have made it this far. You usually run from death, Kirk, not embrace it. And you usually breed it, not stop it. Despite our differences, gentlemen, I think we can all agree there is nothing to be gained by a war that ends in mutual annihilation. No, we do not. I welcome battle with Kirk. I embrace a war of endless victories and glories. But not this war. And not now. Kirk, know that Malkton has issued orders to the strike groups. They await only the word to act. The region wields the power, but it belongs to the Katumba. Only he seal can start this war, and there is nothing to stop Malkton from seeking it. We should take out Malkthon. He's death at an Earth's hand. We'll only start the war you seek to prevent. No Klingon could get close enough for an assassination. Kirk, you must convince the Katumba not to sanction this war before Malkthon obtains the seal. I have a plan, Kark. But we're gonna need a private audience with the Katumba. There may be a way, Kark. Katumba often frequents his tavern. Peter, we need a distraction. I'm on it. He is unknown without his ceremonial robes. There are secret passages out of the palace. You are surprised, Kirk? That a Klingon teenager acts like a teenager? No, not on the slightest. Katumba. Hey, you look like a singer. Help me. The enemy captain, Katumba. This will earn you death. You take great risks, Earther. The cost of doing nothing makes risk a sane man's only choice. Ah, you seek risk. I have heard of Kirk. If you've heard of me, then you know that I seek peace. Katumba, I'm asking you to stop this war before it begins. Otherwise, the galaxy will descend into chaos, and the fighting will be endless. On behalf of your own people, stop this now. Kark, how dare you bring this Earther before me with talk of peace? We do not prepare for war. You ask us to lower our defenses, to invite attack by the Federation. The Federation would never strike first, but we'll defend ourselves if necessary. But we do not prepare for war. Malkthon prepares for war in your name. Malkthon makes no such plans. I was afraid you might say something like that. Enterprise, now! for the Katumba seal. We launch tomorrow. My lord, a full search has been completed. Everyone has been questioned. We will... The Katumba's not in the palace? The guards are being tortured. They don't know where he is. Stop the torture. Kill them! Sector Gamma Alpha 5. Nine battlegroups preparing to attack four Federation colonies. These are ghost ships in the disputed area. Their espionage has told you that these are research colonies. 
There is no glory in conquering unarmed outposts. You do not understand my people. Forced colonization is not unique to the Empire. Belief in government superiority or envy in resources and energy inspires such a logic. Our energy is generated on our moon praxis. It keeps the sacred planet pristine for all to enjoy. Relying on an outside resource for all your energy needs? Unwise. It is easy for the Federation. They have one people, one mind. I have many, and their ways battle against each other. It is the nature of my empire, and nature doesn't change easily. Do you write your own propaganda, or simply believe in it? You live, teacher. I am pleased. I was told you erased your dishonor by causing your own death. Forgive me. I choose to restore my honor by action rather than death. I brought your enemies to you that you may know the truth. Malkthon plans a war that will destroy your people and bring an end to the Empire of Kalos. I hear my father's voice through you, teacher. And I listen. They know you're missing. And we've got to take you back. You'll escort the Cthulhu now. No, no, it is not time. May we speak alone? Of course. You have done well, Keisha. You remain committed to the course? I do. Kirk serves our purpose, and you've convinced him well. His righteousness is his undoing. You have less honor than a Jiras, Kirk. It will be my pleasure to make you pay for your deceit. Later, we're top of the Katumba. So are you. Captain, the search patrols are everywhere. Back inside where we found him. Distract his companion. Do you have a problem with that, Ensign? No, sir. <laughs> Fools! Great words! Where's Peter? He's a cutter. Peter's still distracting. I had to get a medal for that. Take them to the palace dungeon. At least the Katumba kept us out of the actual dungeon. And I don't know that I got through to him. One thing's for certain. Our involvement here is going to force Malthon's hand. If we stop this war, another one follows right behind it. No, the Klingon Empire is just a mass of warring factions. Dozens of great houses, each with its own agenda. And the population is dividing up, throwing itself into camps along family lines, battling in the streets. This isn't Sparta. This isn't feudal Japan. This is medieval England. When Rome fell, the country was divided into all these feudal states, each one of them vying for control. Complete chaos. How did they solve it? A boy pulled a sword from a stone. Fairy tales aren't going to help these people. Ah, oh, Peter, Arthur was real. He did unite England for a time. The knights and their codes? Now that was fiction. You know, some of the great houses follow a similar code. They place honor above all else. Others value victory by any means and at any cost. We can't allow the wrong people to take over. We can be facing an empire of savage, ruthless killers. While they're in chaos, we should exert ourselves to make sure a proper government is in place. Or teach them democracy? Give them values? Better lives? Sorry, Peter. Good intentions usually lead to imperialism. We have one mission here, people, and that's to stop a war. Whatever political intrigue these people have in mind for us, we're not going to get involved. Is that understood? They're lying about their motives? Keisha and the Katumba's reunion was staged to get our sympathy. Believe me, they have their own agenda, and whatever it is, it's not to stop a war. Kark, he speaks of honor, and he still betrayed us. Because somehow, Lieutenant, in his mind, betraying us was the honorable thing to do. Kill them.
These are my prisoners. I decide how to dispose of them. They harm the sacred leader's person. The penalty is death. Do you see harm to me? Go! All of you. Thank you. That wouldn't have been an honorable death. You are a very strange human. Well, the Federation believes in honor as well. And we've learned that through our differences, we can come together. Kisha taught that one must see what lies beyond appearance, but I cannot see who you are, Captain. I'm a man who sees no honor in you fighting a war that will destroy your empire. Don't give in to this madness. Secret leader, Meltthorn asks an audience. He has glorious news. Where are my gods? Who are... You are Kirk's Vulcan. And you? Weapons officer. Tell me, Spock, are you also Kalis in your ship's holiday play? Four of our crew beamed down to meet with you. Now they're missing. They are prisoners in the sacred palace. Convicted of kidnapping the Katumba and violating sanctuary. Their trial was swift. I did not know Vulcans had a sense of humor. They'd better be alive. The Katumba seems amused by them. But Malkthon is in control of Mrs. Kirk dead. His forces have begun to move into the city. I know you want Captain Kirk dead. But even you must realize that he is instrumental in stopping this suicidal war. You misjudge me, Vulcan. I want Kirk dead by my hand. Not executed like some vermin. The palace is not open to Malkthon's troops. It is the only safe place for Earthers today. Convenient. How many operatives do you have in this city? None, for your purposes. You will take us to the captain. What did you do to the Katoma? I left him in your care. He's worse off now than when Kisha had him. It's the Federation enemies, and I haven't been able to determine what devices they used on his mind. <sighs> Execute them. They are under the protection of the Katumba. They are not under my protection. You wield the Katumba's power. You have no power of your own. Without the Katumba's seal, this victory over the Federation dies. Bring me the sword of Kirk. I've got the door, Commander. We're pleased to find you all in good health, Captain. The Katumba has refused to apply his seal to the war plans. Malkton is now desperate. And a desperate Klingon is a dangerous one, Kirk. You are all in great danger. Malkton has sent Kali to Ultar. Your life is forfeit. You must prepare to defend yourself. He's the sacred leader and a descendant of Kalis himself. No Klingon's ever going to harm him. My father was young and mysteriously died only months after Malkthon was appointed warlord. We have to get him to the Enterprise to safety. Hide on an enemy vessel, Kirk. I cannot rule on an enemy vessel that's orbiting the sacred planet. No, but you have a hundred in orbit. Take command of one of them and defy Malkthon. It will not work. Malkthon removed Kali as a threat and will come for the seal again. He will know where he is immediately. Not if they think the Katumba is still here. Mr. Spock is about the same height and build with a cloak. No one would know the difference. I can modulate my voice into a reasonable facsimile of the Katumbas. It will gain you the necessary time. Give Spock your cape. I'm offering you a chance to take your life and your empire back. Take it. Lieutenant Uhura. Take command of the landing party and get back to the Enterprise at once.
You've had time to study the plans and consider the consequences of your actions. Apply your seal now. The plan, Lord Malkthon, poses many dangers. I question it. The dangers are to your enemies only. The prisoners, they... They've escaped! Find them! The cries of the Patak have poisoned your mind. In the name of Kalos, I restore the glory of the Empire. <laughs> The human captain has killed the Katumba! Execute them! Now! You! Stay and guard the sacred presence! Kirk to Enterprise, medical emergency, beam us up now! Mothon on course for Altar. Warp factor four. Bones, how's he doing? I'm doing everything I can, Jim. War begins, Captain. I am thought dead and must countermand Mothon in person. A Klingon ship without orders cannot draw close enough for transport. But a Federation ship could, with a large enough diversion. I command but a fraction of the vessels Mothon does, Katumba, but they are at your disposal. They're going to notice a Federation starship in the middle of the Klingon fleet. Not if they can't see us. A loan of a cloaking device would suffice. Captain, it'll have to be routed to the defector shields if it fails. Allow me, Captain. We are to give the Earthers a cloaking device? As you wish, sacred leader. You know, Karg, Liak looks pretty comfortable in your chair. Spock! Mr. Spock! A minor repair. The sword struck no vital organs. Vulcan physiology. Dead ahead, Captain. It looks like... The Klingon fleet. My lord, a battle force of 100 ships is approaching. No orders on record. Activate planetary defense systems. Operating. Hail them. James T. Kirk. The murderer of our sacred leader has been executed. His ship destroyed. The protector fleet of the sacred leader now comes to Alta, where his region now resides. Cog, our fleet is ready to deploy for battle. I have no need for babysitters. We are honored with the sacred duty to guard the Katumba. An honor which we have carried for longer than your house has existed, Malthorn. You will not dissuade us from our duty. Then take your leisurely orbit around the outer planet. And do not disturb the warriors who glorify the Empire. As you command, my lord. I haven't seen driving that bad since I stole a Corvette as a kid. Get us within transporter range before the confusion dies. Aye, sir. Thirty seconds. It is my duty to lead the attack. You can't. If you die, Malkvine will win. Mr. Spock, if we should fail on this mission, make the destruction of this ship count. Understood, sir. Energize. Kog's fleet has cleared, my lord. Wait! I'm reading a transporter! 
Intruders, sound the alarm! Traitors have invaded Altar. They have schemed to murder the sacred leader and advance their own power. As your Katumba, I hereby order all Klingon battle fleets to stand down and return to base. The plans for this war are faulty, and it diminishes us. Modern weapons do not touch the hand of the Katumba. It is the law. I am the law. I am the Katumba. Since my ascendance, you and those that follow you have treated me as a subject. Malkthon has spilled the blood of Kalis, assassinated two who bore the sacred power. One. You live. The Katumba lives. Do not fear death. Then fear life, Malkthon. You and the House of Duras will be forever marked by dishonor. Then I live to see you die again. So I give you a challenge, traitor. You and all those like you who would seek to diminish the power of the descendants of Kalis. I order Kisha to form a government for me. And I name him as my High Chancellor. I charge him to bring together all the leaders of the great houses and to re-establish the High Council. If there is to be fighting among you, let it take place in the Council Chamber. From this day forward, the Klingon Empire will be governed by honor. And I name Karg, the great house of Mokai, as my warlord. And I charge him to protect my borders against those who would violate my sacred territory, and to spread the glory and the honor of the Klingon Empire to the betterment of those I own. Captain Kirk, you have violated sanctuary, but the Katumba grants you a reprieve. Karg will see that you have safe passage to the Empire's borders. Do not enter my space again, or you will be destroyed. There's a fundamental problem in setting up an honorable government by means of treachery. You knew I was using you for my own purposes. Yes, and I used your purposes to stop this war. Let the boy Emperor know that the Federation is not one of his playthings. Not now, not ever. Be gone, Earther.
approaching disputed area. Captain, we're being hailed by the Dark Destroyer. On screen, Lieutenant. Kirk, I return you to safety as ordered. Then I guess this is goodbye. Now that you're Warlord, I'm sure we won't see you again. On the contrary, I should have a fleet to my back when next we meet. Until then, Captain. Until then, Kirk. You realize that we unknowingly provided him with a complete readout of every ship in the Klingon Empire. I need all the help we can get. Warlord just means he's a bigger target. Yeah, but you have to admit, it was a brilliant move for the Katama to set up a parliamentary government. And a way for the great houses to fight amongst themselves. Still, Doctor, lasting change has to be something that comes from within. Something you're willing to work for. The Klingons are warriors by nature. I would predict that this is just the beginning of a new era of internal struggle. All the better for us if it keeps them fighting in their own borders. Still, it would be interesting to see the Klingon Empire a hundred years from now. Yeah, you can keep your interest. I'll be glad I'm not going to be around. Mr. Chekhov, set a course for Space Station K-7. Helm, warp back to six. Captain's log, stardate 7713.6. Massive explosion ripped apart thousands of kilometers of the planet's surface. I don't know what happened. Scotty doesn't know what happened. That's why I need to talk with her. I have to be part of the investigation. I need to be. With all due respect. You aren't listening to me. Those people were my colleagues. My friends. If it was not an accident, then it was sabotage. Jim. She's most uncommon. But... Captain, that was an incredibly stupid thing to do. Uh, you're welcome. What, am I so incompetent that I didn't see a black market operating right under my nose? Or I'm just plain stupid? You are going way over the top on this. Over the top? I have barely left the launch pad. All hands, red alert! Raise shields. Stand by, phasers. 